Hi, we're, we're John, John and, and Leah. Leah and welcome back to those two Brits. We are so excited to be here in Stratford-upon-Avon and we're about to go and have a look around Shakespeare's birthplace. Yes, we love Shakespeare. We went to drama school, that's where we met, at RADA. And at RADA we did loads of like Shakespeare stuff. We had to audition with Shakespeare monologues and we've just had quite a uh, background in Shakespeare, haven't we? Yeah, this is just like a big throwback for us. It's really nice because we studied so much Shakespeare and now we're like at the home, yeah. at the birthplace of Shakespeare. We're just going to Dive straight in and get involved. Pen and parchment all makes sense, doesn't it, Joel? It does. Pen and parchment. Shakespeare. Paper. Shakespeare's hell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. I mean, it's a Here bleak day, guys, it, it, but. It's more beautiful than this. <laughs> but the river Avon there. Oh, lovely. <laughs> wow. Oh, and that's the RSC. I recognise yeah. the building. Yeah. I've never been, but oh, I've yeah, seen it online. We can go in. Okay. We'll Fab. Okay. Lovely. Right guys, before we head to Shakespeare's birthplace, we're going to this really nice looking Costa, which is a coffee shop, in this Tudor building. Yeah, Leah doesn't really normally like Costa, do you? No, but I will go to the Costa inside the Tudor building. Because <laughs> it yeah. looks nice. No, I, do, I don't normally like a Costa, but I'm going to get the smallest little coffee they do. Yeah. Not a bucket. Not okay. a bucket. We're at roundabout. Here we go. <laughs> Here's Shakespeare. Very Lovely, very with his parchment and his pen. Lovely. Isn't this beautiful? Even though it's a cloudy day, look at these old buildings. It's absolutely beautiful, guys. And we're here at 10 a.m. to be the first in the queue and um, get ourselves in whilst it's quiet. So this is going to be really good. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Can't wait. How nice is this building? The building so good. When this opens later, we need to go in because look at their notebooks. Oh, that's so nice. So nice. They've got quotes from Shakespeare's plays on the notebooks. These are but wild and so whirling good. words. Love that. We love that. We love a gift shop. We love a gift shop. So as I'm sure you already know, William Shakespeare has helped shape us and make us who we are. Not only are his plays performed in theatres and schools and universities around the world, but whilst you're watching this video, Hamlet is being performed somewhere in the world right now. How weird is that? Open me up and smell what's inside. If you're feeling brave, this is what it would have smelled like in the 16th century. Oh, no. Lucky oh, me, I thought we've got a blocked nose. <laughs> is it musty? It just smells like cloves. I don't know. It just smells like really Christmassy. I like the oh, smell okay. of the 16th century. I thought it was in for something way yeah, more fancy. I, really nice. I thought it'd be like a musty costume shop or something. No, no, it's lovely. Oh, it lovely. smells like Christmas, smells like mulled wine. <laughs> Your quote. We'll choose our favourite quote and vote by putting a bead there. So we'll have a look and we'll show you what we vote for. We've both decided that this quote, From read Anne. it. We know what we are, but know not what we may be. We like that too. Two. Oh! That and that's right? the winner at the moment. That's the winner. No one. Second place is this one, which says, love all, trust a few. Do wrong, do to, wrong none. to none. That's quite nice. Do you, well. you want to vote just, for that? Yeah, just one for that. And I'll do, be true to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> It's equal opportunity. It's, good fun, isn't it's it? fun. Oh, I love these old books. This Look at them. I'm going to get you saying this. Some of these books were printed in the 1500s. It's right up your street, isn't it? Isn't it? I collect yeah. antique books, you see. You see. You see. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Quick snapshot of the family tree. Shakespeare's parents had eight children. Two of them died as babies. And then you can see William Shakespeare there survived. And then they went on to have five more children. And it's pretty amazing that he survived really because the year that he was born was when the plague hit the town of Stratford-upon-Avon. So survival was rare. So guys, what's really amazing about this is that half of us, maybe all of us are using Shakespeare quotes without even knowing. If you've ever been like, my salad days, <laughs> that's Shakespeare. If you've ever said, it's all Greek to me, that's Shakespeare too. I just think that's amazing because like loads of his quotes have made their way into like modern yeah. speech. And we're still saying Thomas. them today. Thomas, there's loads more as well. 
green-eyed jealousy. If you act more in sorrow than in anger, Shakespeare. Wow. The list is endless. Yeah. yeah. So as well as like the plays, Shakespeare's plays being put on, whether it's Hamlet or The Tempest or whatever, the traditional plays, there are also adaptations of Shakespeare plays that replicate the story, but it's a modern day story. So I don't know if you've seen the film, 10 Things I Hate About You, but yes. that is from The Taming of the Shrew. And there are so many examples, and we'll try to flash them on the screen, of modern day films that take the sort of storyline or framework of a Shakespeare play. So it actually has a really far reaching like influence on our popular culture. If you think about West Side Story, that's basically Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare has written about every emotion, every feeling, every everything, and everyone's just gone, oh, that story's perfect, I'm gonna yeah. use that story. Like, like in She's the Man with Amanda Bynes dressing up as a man, that's like Twelfth Night. Mm -hmm. It's just genius. It's genius. And you know what? They don't have to pay copyright, do yeah. they? Because he died a long time so ago. So long ago. And I don't know if I agree with that. But it's but, certainly great because it means his work can be shared. Yeah. It's amazing. I think he'd be so proud that his work is so still bad. having an influence today. Imagine if he knew that people just walk around his birthplace going, <laughs> that's where he was born, yeah. these were his wardrobes. Isn't it mad? It's mad. All right, let's actually, we've let's actually done the museum part of the tour and now it's time to go inside his house. Let's go. So one common thing that we saw throughout Shakespeare's birthplace and in Anne Hathaway's house, which we'll come on to in another video, was that there were beds downstairs. So during this time period, beds were really, really expensive and they were a show of status and wealth, mainly due to the wood carvings and the expensive fabrics that hang down and the bedding. So lots of the furniture displayed inside Shakespeare's birthplace is really, really old. The benches in this room at either side of the table are about 500 years old, which is crazy. The cupboard on the side of the fireplace was made in the 1500s. All the furniture in here is made of oak and any pieces that aren't original are very accurate to what the Shakespeare family would have had. So, have, have again. Of course you can, yes. I might not have a you can pick it up and have it again. that bad. So this would be uh, quite nice. So what you've got is probably the sweet and ashy yeah. smell in this one. Yeah, that's, that's you. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. Can you guess what this would be? <laughs> so one smells of manure, one well, smells of urine, right. and one smells of... Don't what's the sweet one, Liam? No. The sweet stuff. I'm just working in that for 12 hours a day. Oh, wow. No. Sign me out. We're going up some stairs now. I think we're allowed up here. We're just yeah. making it up, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're definitely allowed. We're going up to the girls' rooms, are we? Yeah, the, this is where the guests sleep downstairs and then they all slept up here. Oh, it's nice up here. Oh, yes. Very open plan. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. Me and you walking around like it's on right me. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, love the high ceilings. So apparently it was tradition for pilgrims to inscribe their names in the window and the earliest recorded date on the window is 1806. So people were graffitiing even back then. Look, that one says 1840. Can you see it? Washington DC. So obviously a lot of people wouldn't have had beds because they couldn't afford beds. In this house there's a couple of beds here which means they had a little bit of money and they were showing off by having those beds. Um, but what's really interesting is that the phrase she's on the shelf, we've all heard that mm. she's on the shelf, that comes from basically some women might not have married and they wouldn't have had a bed or having the privilege of sleeping in a bed because they didn't marry. So they would have just slept on a shelf, like this shelf up here. The shelf up there that we yeah, filmed. Like that shelf. The... So a lot of people would just sleep on the floor. Wow. And that was sort of high up here. Like all of um, Shakespeare's apprentices would have slept in that room. Mm. And his apprentices would have worked in John's workshop. So I said Shakespeare, I meant John Shakespeare, mm -hmm. the guy that owns the workshop downstairs. And his like apprentices from age 13 to 21 would have slept all on that shelf up there. Wow, no bed on the for the shelf. apprentice and no pay. That That's so cool. So the parlour downstairs was the most sociable room and this is where the bed would be. So how weird is that that people would entertain their guests with a bed in the room just to show off, just look how rich we are. And what would happen is the guests would be able to sleep in that bed if they were lucky enough and if they were important enough and the owners of the house would actually sleep on the floor or somewhere upstairs but they would save the best bed for their guests. 
so the candlesticks above the fireplace was to ward off witches from coming down the chimney and stealing their babies, wow. which I think is really cool. I just can't get over all the etchings on the windows. Yeah. Imagine doing that nowadays. I know, it would be graffiti, People would be wouldn't like, it? Vandalism. I'm sorry, but no. Amazing. Um, do you know what I can't get over? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the creepy, creepy floor. floor. <laughs> We all thought that people were smaller back then, but it turns out that they just used to sleep upright because if they slept lying down, then they thought that the devil would come and take their soul at night because they might mistake them for dead if they were lying flat with their eyes closed. But if they slept upright, then basically they thought that the devil would come in in the night and just say, oh, they're just resting, I'll leave them there, mm. which is so interesting. So the beds could be shorter, but it wasn't because men were shorter or no. women. It was no. just... We're about, apparently the average height was the same as it is now. Wow. Which is interesting. Myth debunked. Myth debunked. <laughs> Thank you, Shakespeare's birthday. So I didn't realise that the birthplace, the building has been loads of different things. So in 1601 it became a pub for a long time. At one stage it was a butcher downstairs. Yeah. Um, and it was obviously three properties, but now it's like one. But yeah. It's been a whole load of different things. So that clip of the pub sign, they've still got the pub sign, yeah. which is really cool. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, nice place. Yeah. Yeah, really nice place. You can tell I'm like going into my 30s now. I'm like, that's Rosemary. That's Rosemary. <laughs> You've become a fan of the gardening. Just the garden. <laughs> Love it. I found Lovely. a pear tree earlier and I was like, one of Shakespeare's pears. And yeah. it, it fell off so It nicely. did. You literally lightly it touched, touched it. it. And it fell off. That means it's ready. Yeah. I'm sure you guys know that. That means it's ready. <laughs> anyway, I put it back. Yeah. Put it back. Didn't belong to me. No. Shakespeare's pear. It's Shakespeare's pear. <laughs> Right, let's go to the gift shop. Yeah. I might buy a notebook. Yes, that would be awesome. Because I might become a playwright. I did actually want to enrol on a playwriting course, cause be I, so cool. but I got denied because my excerpt wasn't very good, so I'm hardly a Shakespeare, but <laughs> <laughs> at least I tried. Oh, we're at the exit. Oh, so let's go. oh yeah, that is the exit. So these are the notebooks I saw through the window, and I just think they're lovely. The Winter's Tale, Act, so scene, cool. Act 3, Scene 3, Exit, Exit Pursued by a Bear. bear. So good. The, the greatest stage direction <laughs> in Shakespeare. This is more the kids section, which we're yeah. saying it's a good selection. It really is, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what? We really like, we really like the, um, these cards. Yeah, the postcards. They're really, nice, aren't they? They're really good. They've got, Just some nice. have quotes, they have drawings from every play. I mean, I'd never write on them. No, <laughs> I really like I'd them. almost like frame them, get yeah, three of really them cool. and like frame them or something. They're, they're only £1.50 per card. Lovely. Love's Labour's Lost. And who is your dear? I did a monologue from Love Labour Was Lost. Yeah, did you? So we both bought a whole range of the different postcards. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I think Let's that one's yours. One's Do you want to show some? Yeah, like this one, Much Dear About Nothing. Let's go this way so people I just like that because that will just remind me when I'm, you know, sitting at home and I look up and see a postcard, it's like, much faff about nothing, yeah. you know, stop worrying. Yeah, much so ado much ado about, about nothing. nothing. Shall I tell you what all yeah. of them mean to me? Okay, next one. Twelfth night. Some are become great from fum achieve fum, that's like some but that some or fum. Some achieve. achieve. But why does it not look like an S? That's the old English oh, S, yeah. I think. Some achieve greatness and some have greatness thrust upon them. We've heard that a million times, yeah, haven't we? We love, love that. that. One. What People. do you think you you've done? Have you had greatness okay. thrust upon you? Yeah. Yeah. Greatness was thrust upon me. <laughs> um and then I think that's like presume not that I am the thing I was. Yeah, we change. We people change. People. Presume not that I'm the thing I was. Oh, that's a really that's good a nice one. one. Yeah. I'm not the thing I was. Yeah. Know? I'm not an idiot anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Midsummer Night's Dream. This is the fluff silliest, silliest stuff. Sl stuff. Yeah. That if, air I heard. In my head, I was like, this is the filliest fluff. Filliest fluff. That's how you can yeah, say it. Yeah, the filliest fluff that I uh, 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 heard. Yeah. So you can say that to this your partner when you're just fed up. Oh, this is the filliest fluff I heard. <laughs> so yeah, this is the silliest stuff oh, that I uh, heard. I like that, that one because it just reminds me to relax. Yeah, just relax. Just relax. Have a day off. Yeah. So yeah, I really enjoyed that gift shop. Yeah, they're so good. And um, you got some, haven't you, Joel? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do a little, little show and tell. Yeah. 
So I got the Two Gentlemen of Verona because when I was auditioning for drama schools, I did a speech from Two Gentlemen of Verona. So I've gone for slightly different. Leah's gone for one quote she relates to. I've gone for like memories, slightly me like memories of personal connections. Although this one, I did like because it's so negative. It was like <laughs> when we are born, we cry that we have come into this great stage of fools. <laughs> Like, as in, like, wow, well, great, I've been born into this earth. Like, I'm surrounded by great, idiots. Surrounded by idiots. <laughs> Macbeth with so the three funny. witches. I was yeah. in that when I was in college. Yeah. But I wasn't a witch, obviously. But, um, love that. I copied you with that one because that is a really it's good quote. It's a good quote. Yeah, I love that. So that's nice. And then Romeo and Juliet because it's a classic. This love. Is after the, they the, both, well, just about, uh, yeah, one of them, I think Romeo sees that Juliet's died and then, or the other way around. Yeah, Juliet isn't that funny? That yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Then, yeah. And she's gone just as like, I'm going to finish died. it. Yeah. That's the thing. It was a poison that, you know, yeah. made her know. look like she's dead, but she's not. Unbelievable. Anyway. Love it. So guys, I'm just going to pop the prices on screen now somewhere so you can have a look at how much it would be for an adult, a family, a child ticket. And also just want to say a huge thanks to the Shakespeare's Birthplace Trust, the charity that have invited us here today. Yeah, it's been so good. We've loved every second and we're actually now just on our way to Anne Hathaway's house, which you'll see in a second video. Anne Hathaway is Shakespeare's wife. So uh, <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and do check out our next video. Yes in Anne Hathaway's cottage. Yeah, see you soon. Bye. Bye.